Yay! Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm just going to mute you all just so we can get in and do it all. But thank you for your patience if you have been waiting. <laughs> um, it's all about technology and online and this happens. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but nice to see all your smiling faces. You're all so gorgeous. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to mute everyone now. Now, I just want to also make sure that everyone can see this chat box off to the side. I'll say a quick hello and um, please post any questions or comments. Hello! And just say hi so I know you're here because I can't see everyone. So, <laughs> hi guys. It's nice to see you. So post off to the side to say a quick hello if you can. If not, that's fine. Make sure you have a pen and paper for this. There's a lot of content. Um, and of course, there's going to be opportunities at the end. Hi, Viv. How are you going? Nice to see you. Hey, Jess. Okay. Hi, Brenda. Nice to see you guys. Get a pen and paper and we'll get into this. And it's already recording, which is awesome. So I was going to do a live and the thing. Let me just see if I might still do that. I think I might just take a bit too much time. Yeah, we'll just get into it. Okie dokie, pen and paper. I'm going to share my screen in a minute so you guys can see everything. And I'm literally sharing everything today. So firstly, just confirming that we are doing a create an online business for free call today. Um, and today what we're doing is going through, I thought that I would actually be just going through the all the free options that you can um, use for online businesses, but also there's a lot of content in there about purpose and mission, which I was like, well, thank you for that added bonus universe. So that was awesome as well. And there's going to be a lot of things you can think about um, after this and you can sit with and make some notes as well. And also in the um, Love for Humanity uh, Facebook page, you can post some comments or questions or messages this is also going to go on YouTube as well. So um, basically with Love for Humanity, this is, is we're sharing everything. I don't hold back in any information that I receive. And um, I'll be doing these once a week um, around this time every week. So I'm going to be sharing exactly what needs to be shared at the exact time. Um, so make sure you guys tune in every week um, for all this information. I have been told not to hold back on anything. So I'm sharing everything that I know. So hopefully you guys can get a lot out of it. So let me just share my screen now. And I'm gonna find, there he is. So hopefully you can see my screen. And yes, so just wave if you can see my screen there. Yeah, cool. I can see you guys as well. When you post comments, if you post a comment, what I'll be doing is I'll be putting that also on the screen as well so we can see each other's comments. You'll, you'll see everything pretty much off to the side there. So, um, oh, do I want an update? No, that looks okay. <laughs> okay, so how to create an online business for free. Um, these events will actually not just be run by me, but also anyone else who joins the Love for Humanity um, team. So, we're, again, whoever specializes in whatever area, I probably won't say I'm a specialist in online business, but I actually have had online businesses for 20 years. When I wrote that down, I went, oh my God, 20 years is a long time. <laughs> but um, I do have a degree in business, which I could probably say have never used. <laughs> you can say that. Um, I suppose it's probably helped somewhere in the background there, but um, really at the end of the day, when you're running businesses or, or um, creating businesses, it's all you just kind of go with the flow and try and work it out as you go. Um, and that's what I talk a little bit about in here about how, you know, what kind of things you need to look out for, especially when you're creating an online business. Um, but what I found, especially when I did this process, is I found that a lot of the businesses that I've created have actually been businesses that aren't what you would probably call normal businesses. <laughs> so I remember the first one was a butler service. So I just created that and that was a long time ago. Um, and then created a wedding planning business, which that was back when wedding planning wasn't very popular. And then of course, when I finished doing that, that was actually very popular 
business to create. But when I started it, there was nothing. There was no, um, there was no templates. There was nothing that you could use. There was no one to compare with, which was probably a good idea. Um, and I talk a little bit more about that as we go along. Um, and then went into being an EFT practitioner, which again was kind of new back then. And it was, it all became kind of under the topic of woo woo and weird and everything else. And now it's becoming quite mainstream. And now what I'm doing is sharing our next steps for humanity, which again is not a topic that most people talk about. So, but hopefully down the track, it'll be something that is mainstream and something that we all work towards together as a collective human group, which is very exciting. So let's get into the content. <clears throat> So what is an online business? Well, at the moment, an online business is actually perfect for the economic climate that we're in. Um, with you know, COVID-19, um, everyone has been affected by that. I think a lot of people are um, rethinking what they're actually doing. Um, again, if you've got any comments on this, pop them off to the side. It'd be great to hear from you. Um, how you guys have been affected by this, you know, local or global climate that we're in. But I'm finding a lot of people are either struggling with unemployment or they're, they've you know, reduce their income um, or just because of what's happening, they're rethinking what's going on in their lives and what they actually want to do. So this is a great time if you're looking at having an online business to um, reconsider, you know, what you're doing and if you're actually doing what you want to do. So, um, of course, because of this, we are isolated. So <laughs> there's, there's not a lot we can do except for online. I don't know about you guys, but I've had so many chats online with um, friends and family and things like that, that I would not normally do anything to yourself. Well, why don't we normally do this, um, you know, normally? And so this is where I think that people who haven't been exposed to technology before have kind of been forced into it, um, regardless of age, um, what they do or whatever those who really wanted to keep in contact with family and friends are now using technology which is great so of course technology is really advanced at the moment especially if we look at um well this is why we're a little bit late because zooms and things like that platforms that were always there had to upgrade because of the volume of people that are using them so um so that's becoming much more advanced and it's becoming much more normal now for people to be doing things online and this has only happened in the last six to eight weeks, which is crazy how quickly that's been happening. Um, we have access to an international market. So right now we are talking about everyone being in it together, everyone working together. And so this is where it's really important for us to see that whatever you're doing <clears throat> and whatever business you're running, you can actually have access to an international market. So, and we're going to go through in a minute with statistics for online business and things like that. Um, again, the concept that we are one online is bringing everyone together, bringing the world together, which is exactly what we're doing. Um, and of course, we're going through a um, ascension shift um, and the shift is meaning that people are really being forced to move in to follow their passion and their purpose um, to help people on a larger scale and online business is perfect for that. So advantages of having an online business, we've probably got some people in here that have already got online businesses and wanting to learn a little bit more, but some that have no idea. So again, I'd love to hear any thoughts or comments if you've got any of those that we can share. Um, the advantages, well, I'm a great advantage now, of an example of that now, sitting here in my pyjamas. <laughs> Yes, they are underneath there. It's five o'clock in the morning where I am here and I do a lot of my business um, before everyone wakes up in our house. So that's an advantage. It's pretty flexible. Um, works in with families and if you have, um, you know, even some people who have full-time jobs uh, or, or have, you know, other careers or what have you can still set up an online business on the side. Um, they call them side hustles or, you know, any some kind of discretionary income. If anyone wanted to actually do that, they could actually use an online business for that. It's very cost effective. We don't really need to have to hire out offices or, um, or anything like that, we can actually, and you'll see exactly what you need in a minute for to have an online business. So you don't really need a lot to set up an online business. And as I'm sharing today, we can pretty much do it for free. So it's very cost effective. Uh, you can claim things like the room that you're in, the computers, um, electricity for tax or anything like that. Um, and 
again, you know, you can work in and out with, with anything else that you want to do. So that's, that's a really big advantage. But there is also disadvantages of having an online business. If anyone else has got any other thoughts around that, you can comment as well. Disadvantages is again that you can work 24 seven. <laughs> um, we think that's great that it's flexible, but you could also get in the trap of being in this office 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so you've got to set times as to when you're actually wanting to work and how you can work. Um, but often too, there's sometimes um, when you have an office or a business at home that you don't get a lot of downtime. Um, if you, again, this is all mindset stuff that, that is a, in a disadvantage. Um, if you have no downtime, you're always kind of popping into the office, doing things. Um, you could be answering phones all, time, all the time of the year. You could be going into emails and you know, social media and all that sort of thing. So if you get caught up in that trap, then that's actually quite difficult to deal with um, when you allow your online business to take over. Um, the other thing is that's quite lonely sometimes. Um, I've actually worked through that in the early days and um, I actually find my online business creates a lot of connections to more people than I have in my own life. So, so I don't see it now personally as a lonely business, but, and there's a lot of support systems online and things like that. But nowadays, um, you know, if you are sitting here in an office trying to do your work, it is very lonely. You don't have anyone to talk to except for the people online, which again, as a, as a wonderful support. So the other thing is that if you, especially if you have families or anything like that, you have actually a lot of interruptions. Um, and so you've got to be quite um, strict in when you are working so you don't have those interruptions. As I said, except for the cat who I've already locked away, <laughs> I won't get the interruptions right now. So it's awesome, especially at this time of the morning. But also some people won't understand what you're doing or they might think you're just, you know, running a hobby or, you know, it's not serious or what have you. So, so what happens, a lot of people don't really take your work seriously because, you know, well, they can just pop over because you're at home. Um, and so this is where, again, looking at how you're seeing your own business and, and setting your own rules, I don't like using the word boundaries, but setting your own rules is actually really important. Um, and just having that mental stability, you really do have to keep doing a lot of mental work to move through any kind of mental instability that comes up when you're working online, especially on your own. So, so what do I physically need to run an online business? To be honest, a computer or an iPhone or a tablet is pretty much it. You don't really need much else. Uh, the other thing is the internet. So you do actually need to have the internet as well, but pretty much most people I know have those two things or one of those things. So it's actually um, quite easy and you don't really need much to set up an online business. Um, what if I don't know what online business I want to create? Um, the first, I've got some steps here if you wanna write them down. The first thing you need to work out is do you want it to be full-time, casual, um, part-time? Uh, how many hours do you wanna work in it? You do have to work all that out. Um, looking at your purpose and mission, which we'll be talking about next. Um, being open to creating something that no one has actually heard of before. And that's where by doing this, I realised that most of the businesses that I've set up are kind of things that people have never kind of seen before, or it's not very popular. And um, you have to be open for that, especially if you're doing big mission work. Uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, these days or even in the past, and we'll read certain um, philosophers and people who were extremely um, influential in the shift of change of thinking and things like that, really it took about 20 years, 20, 30 years or sometimes centuries for people to pick up on the new way of thinking. So sometimes when you're creating, especially creating an online business from a mission point of view, um, sometimes no one's actually running the business that you actually want to create. And in your head, uh, it's quite daunting. You'll actually think to yourself, well, that's weird or I don't really know if anyone will take it on because it's different or whatever. So you have to kind of be open to creating something that no one else has actually done before and starting from scratch. Um, I'm lucky because I've done lots of them, so I know how to do that. But it's just a trial and error and you can't kind of beat yourself up on what actually is happening um, or what thoughts are coming up when you're trying to set up a business because it's very difficult to deal with those mindset the chatter that goes on which tells you all the different things around why you can't set it up 
So you kind of have to be quite mentally strong in that respect and notice the thoughts that are coming up to then go, well, no, I'm choosing a different one. So the other thing I've actually worked out is um, to have no expectations. So a lot of us will think, oh, if I put something out on Facebook or if I do something and then I'll just keep watching to see how many people like it or who comes along or whatever. I've learned that you can't have any expectations or you can't actually go back and keep looking at how many or who. You just got to keep plodding along. A lot of online business um, success Success is based on momentum and consistency. So just turning up and just doing what's really important for you um, is really, really um, a big element in online business. Um, the other thing um, that's really important is, especially if you're here, you're actually here um, by following a guidance to be here. Um, obviously, being um, following a mission or a purpose is is you know, pathway that as a human, you're here to wanting to make a difference in the world. So you have to follow the guidance that you're receiving. And sometimes again, your head will get in the way and say, you can't do that, or that's weird, or there's these limitations, but you've got to move through all of those and expect them even, because they'll always be there as you go along on the pathway. <clears throat> and then what if I've got no money to, to get my online business um, started? Well, you actually don't need a lot of money and you'll see how much. Well, as I said, all you need is a computer or a phone or a, um, a, a tablet and the internet. So as long as you can have that, that's pretty much all you really need. Everything I'm sharing today is free, um, but you can also have upgrade options in the programs that I share. And also there's lots of other programs, a lot of other software that you can use to set up the online business. So as you get... Um, for earning a bit of money, you can start to upgrade all of those. So, and then how do I get this thing off the ground is um, get realistic with the guidance that you're receiving. Go within, start tuning into your passion and your purpose, um, looking at your pathway, and we'll talk all about that in this next slide. <clears throat> so your purpose and your mission, who are you? you actually do need to know who you are before you actually take this journey into following your purpose and your mission. Um, too many people actually look at, look at others for inspiration and end up following someone else's pathway. Um, and again, what I'm saying is that you need to be okay with um, the different ideas and the different concepts that come through. Following your own pathway means that you actually have to know who you are um, and going within for the answers for doing the work. So you actually have to have an idea of who you are. So the way you do that is look at the programming that's going on in your own mind, um, look at your life and seeing what's coming up in your own life. Um, I love it when I don't, I can't read my own writing. Oh, no comparing. <laughs> Um, you can't compare with anyone because it's like, I always say it's like comparing apples with oranges. If you compare, you're actually following someone else's pathway. And when you follow someone else's pathway, you're off your own pathway. And that then means that, well, what I found is that things don't work. And you'll find, especially by having your own business or online business, is that when things don't work, if there's usually a reason for it. And you've got to tune within yourself to see what that is and you'll find it'll either be a thought process or it'll be an expectation um, or it'll be you're following someone else's pathway uh, to to um, to whatever it is that you're wanting to do because you know it's really hard when you look online there's so many things going on that you know that's a good idea I might do that or that's a good idea I might do that I'm actually um, asking you guys to not do that <laughs> um, unless it's a guided um, you know guided message to go online and have a look at that. Um, try and tune within yourself and know who you are and what, um, again, we'll go into why you're here, what, you, what you're doing here, all that sort of thing. But the other thing to be aware of is your ego. So pretty much most of our thoughts are egoic thoughts that are here to protect you. And it's scary having an online business because you don't know how it's going to work out. So your ego will pop up a lot and try and stop you from having an online business. Um, so I would say bypass that and just follow your mission and your purpose. Um, and again, you know, sometimes we'll actually have those thoughts around money and how what money means to us, any kind of money programming. So you do need to nail that as well. Know yourself intimately, be absolutely honest with yourself around how you see, especially money. 
um, how you see yourself um, because there's no use starting a business when you've got these things holding you back. They will always be holding you back until you actually look at them and know that they're there and deal with them. So why are you here? Now, the thing is, is that you have, everyone has talents and gifts uh, that, that you probably don't even know you have. Uh, the things that people say to you and have a little bit of a think about that, the people who say to you, um, oh, you're so good at that, or, you know, I like doing this with you, or whatever. The things that come natural to you that you actually do every day are your gifts and talents. Um, some people think that it has to look, you know, their gift and talent has to look like something that they don't know about. To be honest, the gift and talent that you have, you actually do know about, but you don't think it's special. Um, the thing is that other people think it's special. So for me, writing, talking, you know, I remember, I think it was about I don't know, 10 years ago now, I remember just sitting there going, I just want to get paid to talk all day. And then all of a sudden that's a thing, right? <laughs> but if I said to myself, well, I don't know how, then I would have got stuck. So you've got to actually look at what it is that you, it's easy for you, that's really fun for you, that people usually say, oh, I just love doing that with you, or you're so good at that, or whatever. And you go, oh, it's nothing, because it's actually nothing to you, because it's so easy, but for everyone else, it's really special. Um, so you've got to tune into what those things are. And again, we've got to get out of our heads, well, I don't know how that's gonna make money. I don't know what, you know, you've got to just tune into the fact that this is what your mission and purpose is, and this is the vehicle to getting there, but you're not meant to work out how it happens, you will be guided along the way, which is the next thing, which is following the guidance. So what are you here to do? You've got, you're given guidance all the time and they come through as thoughts, they come through as messages and signs. Now, if you're new to this, that might sound a little bit weird, but literally every second of every day, we're given um, just things that pop into our life, whether it's a thought, whether it's someone saying something, whether it's um, something that's happening, which, and I always say, whenever you actually get really teary about something, whether it's about children, whether it's about old people, whether it's about animals or whatever, um, that's usually part of your purpose and mission. So I always know, whenever you get the goosebumps, whenever you get teary and you really like, just want to do something about it, that is what you're here to do. And again, most people go into, well, I don't know what that looks like or how that um, is supposed to, you know, what am I supposed to do with that? That's not your job. You just need to know what those things are that you're here to do and the elements of it, and it starts to fall into place. Um, the other thing is when you're given these ideas and these this guidance is that you need to actually act without thinking. We're actually taught so much to think before we do things. And I don't know about you guys, but literally I, real, I realized doing this work that I would be thinking about going to the bathroom. I'd be thinking about having to get ready. I'd be thinking about having to do the dishes. I'd be thinking about, and the thing is, is that when you sit there and you're thinking about all these things that you've got to do, you, it's just overload. There's just too much going on. And then you just want to lay on the lounge and watch Netflix. <laughs> it's just too much. I have, well, I've got to do that, got to do that, got to do that. So the thing is, is that write down all the things that you've got to do and then just do them without the thinking. It's actually really interesting to take yourself into that place of I'm physically doing these things, but I've got no thoughts. It's very, very cool. You get things done so much quicker and they don't seem like such a burden. And then once you've done that thing, all you need to do is, okay, I'm gonna then do the next thing, but not think about that. Because you've already written down what you need to do and you just keep crossing it off. You don't have to think about doing it. So that's a really important part of what you're here to do because if you keep thinking about it, your brain's gonna keep trying to work it out and you'll never get anywhere. So, um, and then the other thing is there's no getting there. So a lot of us will think to ourselves, oh, once I get there, I'll have this. Once I do this, I'll have this or whatever. There is no getting there. It's a journey. If you were there, you probably would be an angel floating around in the sky somewhere if you'd worked it all out. Um, we're never going to work it all out and we're always going to keep learning and growing. So you've got to really tune into this new mindset that this thing, even this online business is not going to save you. Um, there is no getting there. It's all a journey. And if you're interested in having an online business or even following your purpose and your mission, you need to know that 
you'll start to do one thing, but it'll evolve into another thing. And then it moves into another thing and then it changes and then you keep growing and the world keeps changing and you have to go with it. So if you say to yourself, well, this thing is the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do it the rest of my life. The world keeps changing and you're still back here. You just have to keep changing with everything. And we naturally are changing beings anyway. So there is no getting there and there is no there, which is great. It takes the pressure off, right? You can actually just keep following what comes up in your awareness and keep just doing what, um, what you're meant to be doing in your business and in your life. So then what is your purpose? A lot of people say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what, what I'm meant to be doing. What I find what happens within ourselves is that when you look at what your purpose is, what you tend to think your purpose is, is something in the future. I need to work towards my purpose. I need to go and get my purpose. Um, I need to live my purpose. But what we're forgetting is your purpose is whatever you're doing right now. So look at your life right now and say, whatever's happening right now is actually my purpose right now. Because we're moving into a time where um, we're kind of not really wanting to be stuck in the past, but when we focus on the future, the future never really happens. Like tomorrow never comes because it's always changing. Like things are always changing. And when we focus on the future and trying to project into the future, what then happens is that we get stuck in things again, always being out there. Whereas we need to look at what's going on right now and make that your purpose. Um, whatever it is right now, look at what you're doing right now. And when you feel purposeful about doing that, then what happens is that every step you take in each moment will also be purposeful and then you'll actually feel that you are following your purpose now and you'll never be thinking what is my purpose again that works into what you're here to do which means that when you're feeling purposeful purposeful in this moment you're just doing 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 and knowing that you're following that purpose so it all just all these just flow along together and work together with um, with each other beautifully so then what is your mission um, <clears throat> the, the thing is, is that when we look at what our mission is, our mission is always linked to our pathway. So what am I here to do? What, what we did before we came down here onto the planet was that we actually have a spiritual team that we meet with. Um, and we say, okay, when we come down into this next incarnation, we're going to, um, do this we're going to facilitate these things for each other we're going to help each other with this um we're going to play these roles and we're going to facilitate something here so part of your mission is actually is usually with other people and it's usually connected so this is where it's really hard when you've got an online business because you work on your own is that most of your mission is never really on your own it's usually working with other people in some capacity so um what you've got to do is actually work on helping yourself. And then what happens is that you start to help others to grow and to evolve as well, because that is our, our purpose, this is our mission, is to help yourself and others to grow and to evolve. And that's what's, what, it, I mean, if you look at all life on earth, it has been evolving since, I don't know when it started, but it's evolved. We've, we've actually evolved from single cell organisms through to these multicellular organisms now if that didn't evolve we would still not we wouldn't actually be here and we don't really know what's going to happen in the future around how we what we're going to evolve into we're actually going to evolve into quite superhuman beings and the things that are coming into your life right now are helping you to do that so you need to then start to tune into this purpose around and your mission around helping yourself and helping others to evolve. And once you realize that evolution is actually your mission here and whatever you're doing is helping yourself and others to evolve, then that's when you'll actually be on, on your mission. Um, and if you wake up every morning saying, my mission here is to facilitate something for myself and for others, um, that's where you'll, you'll know that everything that you do in every day is very purposeful. And then how do I create a vehicle to live my purpose? Um, the vehicle really is through, it's not going to be through a thought. It'll be through a feeling um, or through those messages and signs or through the guidance. Um, 
you won't ever think it, you might receive it. And again, if you've got any issues around not knowing how to receive information or to think it, um, you can message me and I can, I can show you how to do that. But when you're actually wanting to work out how, this is the vehicle to live your purpose, it'll usually be through receiving information or it'll be through a feeling. And you've got to, again, get, get to know yourself. You've got to know yourself to know how to follow that. It's usually things that you really love that are easy and fun. And this is going to help you to live your purpose and what vehicle you're going to create. And again, you have to be okay with something that's not being created yet. I've got a really beautiful example of, um, especially YouTubers these days, a great examples around examples around how they can live their purpose, make a lot of money, but actually do something really different. And I urge you guys to Google people online who are doing really different things and earning a lot of money. So people in my mastermind and other groups know about this guy I'm going to talk about, but there's a guy called Mr. Beast, for example. And if you Google him on YouTube, um, he he actually makes money by giving money away. Now, if he said to himself, Oh, I don't know how that's going to work. And he got in the way he, or I don't know how I'm going to make money out of that. Like, so he would just, he would not actually be where he is today. So he started off with nothing. He didn't, he didn't have that. I always thought he had backing, but he didn't have backing at all. And what he did was he actually, he actually started his own YouTube channel and started to get interest in what he was doing on his YouTube channel. And then a company gave him $10,000 to, um, from, um, and, and I'll be teaching this in Love for Humanity later on, um, through affiliate marketing and um, sponsorship. So he ended up getting $10,000. What he did was he gave that $10,000 away. And by giving that $10,000 away online, he actually received more money from sponsorship and affiliates. And because he had a lot more Sponda had a lot more um, subscribers. So he found the more money he gave away, the more subscribers he would get, the more affiliate and sponsorship marketing money he would bring in. So he's done a lot of videos where he's given away a million dollars, he's given away houses, he's given away cars, he's given away so much, especially to people who need it. Um, and that creates more subscribers which means he actually ends up getting more money the more, more things he does, more he gives away. So if he said to himself and he got the idea, oh, well, if you give money away, then you will get money back. If his head went into, well, that's not going to work. How's that going to work? He probably wouldn't have done it, but this next generation coming through, just do it. They don't, they don't care really too much about the making money or where I'm going to get it from. And this is where we're moving into with purpose and mission is you don't really need to work out how to make the money. It'll actually start coming through when you live your purpose and mission. So um, there is 7.7 .7 billion on the planet, people on the planet. Um, the best way to help people more on a larger scale is actually online. And if you want to help more people, it's the absolute most important way and the only way really to make a big difference. So there's a lot of content here. So if, again, if you want to get your pens and paper out, I'm actually just going to give you the content for how you can have a free online presence. So the first thing that you can do to have an online presence is get a website. So you don't have to have these things. And this is quite comprehensive, this information I'm sharing with you. It might be a little bit overload because there's a lot of content in here. But again, I just, I'll, I'll give you some ideas at the end as to what you can do with this. So if you're interested in getting a free website, a website I'm actually advise you to get a website that has hosting attached to it, that's included in the free website. Um, sometimes you can get stuck with creating websites and then you've got to buy hosting on top of that. There is, there is free website templates and free websites you can get um, with free hosting or hosting included in it. So the ones that I recommend, um, there is a company called webs.com, webs.com. There's Wix, which a lot of people have heard of, which is W-I-X. There's um, Weebly, which is W-W-E-B-L-Y, and Squarespace, which is Square. 
space. <laughs> so these platforms, so there's, there's four of those there, they're the ones that I actually do recommend um, and have used. And uh, I love these websites because they're the drop, um, the drop box. Like they're very, very easy to use. I'm not a tech person at all, um, but these websites are very easy to use and they are free to set up. Now, most of them won't actually give you a um, free domain name um, or it won't have a domain name in there. So this is just to start you up and it might, it might, you might have your name or whatever. Um, plus at wix.com will be your website name. Um, if you're wanting to have your own website name, some of them will actually allow you to have your own website name for, you know, maybe, $10 a month or $15 a month if you wanted to actually have your own website name and sometimes they include the website name with that upgrade so um, but starting up if you want to do it for free you can you can these are these websites are beautiful uh, and they look very professional so uh, they're very very um, very good if you're wanting to set up a website for free uh, then there's social media platforms I think most of us know a lot of them uh, we've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Now they're just like the top of the, the pile of social media platforms. And then the younger generation are kind of into TikTok and Snapchat and all those others. So, so these are all free. These are all free for us to use uh, for an online business. And they're a great way of connecting with people all around the planet beautiful. Um, the other thing that I will add to social media platforms is a lot of them offer the options to create groups online. Online groups are an amazing way to build connections. Um, I always say don't build the group or don't go into a group with the intention of selling something or trying to promote yourself. You'll actually go, if you go into groups with the um, intention of helping people, you will always be very successful in using online groups to have create connections and to build a client base. Um, and again, when you have the intention of helping, that will always just happen naturally. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen, you know, Facebook groups where people are in there just selling, 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 it gets really boring and people just tune out. But if you're actually there to help someone and if someone likes how you're helping someone, or even if that person likes what you're saying, with no strings attached, they will actually message you or follow you or whatever. So I've, I have actually personally found online groups to be an amazing way to connect with and help other people, especially if you want to help other people on the planet um, with whatever advice you've got. I've also found two online groups and, and how you're helping people on, in online groups actually helps you to work out what business you're going to have because you'll still find that you'll hone into something that someone's struggling with and you'll have the answer and they'll go, oh my God, that's awesome. And you're like, again, you go, well, that's just me. I know that information. So it's, it helps you to, to really hone into what it is that you want to do online. So play around in, in Facebook or Instagram groups, any of those groups um, to find out a little bit more about what, what you do like and what you're good at and how you can help. Um, setting up a blog is great to create a free online pleasant, uh, presence. Um, Blogger is a good one for that, which is through Google. Uh, and that's a very basic. You can even just have an, a, a blog and not have a website and use your blogger. Um, website as your own website and they're very again free and very good to use to get an online presence and to share your, and share your message. Um, there is a website called medium.com which is almost like an online magazine style um, platform which you can create an account online and start writing, start sharing on there. They Once you do start to build up a, a a bit of um, quite, a, quite a few followers and you post there every day or whenever you can, um, you'll start to find that Medium will start to, to promote you to their followers and um, their subscribers as well. So, um, so, and the other thing is if whatever website you've set up, you can also run a blog through your website as well. Blogs are really great to help with um, search engine optimization, which is always changing. So as long as you're continually um, putting content in there, it'll help you or help people find you pretty much. So, and that's how you can increase your online presence. 
uh, I found YouTube to be an invaluable um, way of getting yourself out online, uh, especially if uh, what you're doing is, is of interest of other people. When they're Googling, I don't know if you find when you Google something or go for a search or what have you, um, you'll start to see that people's YouTube channels will pop up giving you, showing you a video of that topic or what have you, especially the how-to videos, um, which this one will be going, this video will be going onto my YouTube. Um, and you know, the heading will be how to set up an online business for free. So, you know, someone might be typing that in and they will find me through that. And then they'll start to look at other content as well. Um, so YouTube is awesome for SEO, which is great. Um, if you like talking and like sharing information that way, um, you can set up a podcast. So setting up a podcast, you can set up for free using Podbean. Um, P-O-D-B-E-A-N. Uh, Buzzsprout, which is B-U-Z-Z. -Z S-P-R-O-U-T and SoundCloud as well. Um, again, there's lots of options with that. Um, and podcasts are really popular these days. A lot of people put a podcast on their phone when they're driving or when they're going, um, especially if it's in a topic that they really enjoy. So uh, if you want an idea of, of what podcast you can set up to get some content out there, you can just start listening to what you kind of like. And again, I'm not into comparing, but start to see what you kind of like, what they talk about, how they run things. Most of them have pretty um, structured ways of running a podcast where they'll have an introduction, then they'll have standard questions or guests or, or content there. But again, create your own um, and get out there and do it because people are wanting to hear what you want to say. Um, the next thing is writing for online magazines. <clears throat> Specifically, online magazines, I would actually focus on whatever industry you're wanting to work in. So if you want to know what online magazines are out there or you could feature an online magazine, just Google what magazines are out there for your industry or whatever you're wanting to um, put out there and that's pretty much free advertising for you online plus they've got their own subscribers and things like that so you can get your online presence really ramped up if you start writing for online magazines um, in your industry there's lots of them out there and if you look at i'm um, usually on the bottom of the um, websites or even the facebook pages or whatever of the online magazine you'll see a little link that says do you want to write for us or whatever and you just send that application in and it's pretty easy um, so industry listings, so again, whatever industry you're looking at going into, there's paid ones, but there is also free industry listings um, on websites that you can put your name under and get your online presence out there. So again, look at what industry listings um, options there are, websites that are on out there that you can actually start to list for free. Even if you type into Google um, for your industry, what Websites are out there where I can list for free and there's a lot of them out there. Same with community listings. Community listings, um, probably not so much for online because they are community, so they're around you, so they're more face-to-face. -face. But again, if you want to build not only a presence in the world, but even in your local community, you can still, I've still got clients that, that I work with who are in my community that I work with online. So. Um, they can still find you and you can run, you know, little events or things like that, or even things like this, you know, things online for people who live right in your community. So then there's direct directories again. So directories, you just Google and have a look at what directories are available. Um, I mean, we used to have things like yellow pages or white pages and things like that to put our businesses in, but now there's endless directories online that you can feature in. Uh, you just Google it, you know, directories for such and such, whatever you're wanting to do for your business. Um, and then I recommend <laughs> using Google as an amazing resource. I will go more into software um, options for Google in, on the next page. But while you're investigating what business you're wanting to put out there, I actually recommend you use Google to do a bit of market research. Um, not only what's out there, but what... Um, 
like pitch some ideas for yourself. Um, I do recommend first off to Google yourself to see how you, what your online presence already is um, because it's interesting to see what's out there. It's very interesting. Um, Google your industry, whatever you're wanting to go into, um, you'll find out a lot more about your industry. Um, and then also in Google, there is specific um, links for through Google Ads or Google Trends which help you to know what people are keying into Google to find you. So that when you're, whenever you're doing anything online, you use that phrase because that's the one that people are putting in to use you. So there's amazing resources through Google to be able to see exactly what words you can use, um, what people are looking for, which is really important um, to get some market research as to, um, again, how you can get that online presence. And this is all for free which is really awesome. Bit of time involved, but you know, when you're passionate, that doesn't really matter. Okay. So again, lots more content I'm going to share with you with free online operational software. So this, and I'll talk about what you can do with all of this later. Um, I'm gonna get you just to write down some of the things um, in here that you can use to create some of these other software options. Um, and again, this, these are all going to be for free. There are other options to upgrade and there are other options that are paid. And these, these digital products are pretty much, they're not all, the they're, they're not the only free online options that you can use. They're just the ones that I have had access to, that I've used, that I recommend. Um, but at the end of the day, if you, you can do your own research, there's lots of free online um, softwares that you can use. So for mailing lists and messenger systems, um, I always say I, I love um, MailChimp for mailing lists, but again, there's actually so many other ones. I found not a lot of them offer a free option um, and MailChimp does op offer a free option up to 500 people on a mailing list. Some people might go, what do I do with a mailing list if you're new to the system? It's just to, it's just a way to keep in touch with um, people who like you <laughs> and how to share more of your information and content with them. So tell them what's going on, things like that. Um, I think back in the olden days, I think it's starting to change. People used to judge how successful you were on how many people you had on your mailing list. I think it's starting to change because there's other ways to see um, judge success. Um, and even in the social media realm, they're actually looking at micro, their micro, I think they're called micro influencers, which is anyone who has followers up to around a thousand followers, which is actually not that hard to create over time. Um, so even influencers who have only a thousand followers are actually being looked at through different companies and different um, sponsorship options. So, um, more numbers is not necessarily better, but it's more how many people do you want to impact. And then messenger systems, um, that's kind of a new concept with bots and things like that. They're kind of a bit out of my realm of, <laughs> of expertise. You do actually usually have to get someone specific to help you, but you can use messenger systems through Instagram or through Facebook to be able to be in contact with people. Um, and sometimes there's, they're quite advanced in how they can communicate with um, a list on Instagram and Facebook. I tend to just do one-on-ones, but you, because you do actually need to get someone to help you with a messenger system and how to set those up. It's very, a little bit more technical. <laughs> um, and then marketing and launch pages or landing pages. Um, you can use the website that you set up. And so the website that you set up, the free website that you set up, you can actually have a hidden page so you can hide a page from your website, which you can use as a, as a launch page or a landing page or whatever. And let me just quickly explain what that is, is that when you're actually trying to promote something or you're selling something and people need somewhere to click, to buy, <laughs> then you need a place for them to do that. Um, especially if you're doing something that um, has a process where you start to tell someone about something or you're sharing something or whatever, and then you say, have a look at this link for more information. Um, then they will go to your launch page or your landing page, uh, whether, whether it's on your website, or you can have to actually use the free MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp actually has free um, landing pages that you can use so that people have somewhere to go where they can actually read more about what you're talking about 
and I have a button that they can click to purchase. So, um, yeah. Um, and so when, you, or when you've got your website, I find the website's easier to do um, and you just have it hidden as a page that's not actually seen on your website, it's in the background. Um, then going into funnels, funnels is kind of similar to the marketing and launch pages where you'll have the launch page and then it's a process of once they click something or whatever, they start to receive emails as things going along with content or contact or reminders or whatever. Um, again, funnels, the funnels aren't anything that I really use too much. I Following the guidance, I couldn't even tell you what system I use because it's just guided. So um, I haven't actually particularly used a funnel system, but I know they're out there. Some of them are really complicated, which have like seven different steps to what, how you communicate with your market. Um, some are really easy where there might be just three steps or whatever. So MailChimp again is a really great way to set up a funnel where, where you can have steps on once they receive this email, then they wait a couple of days and they get another email and then they wait a couple of days or, you know, so MailChimp's really, really good. Um, and then there's another one that's a paid one, which is ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is, is all of that. You've got launch pages and um, um, all the other sales tools that are involved. Uh, but that's about $95 a month. So that might be something that you might look at down the track if you're wanting to do a funnel. Um, but as I said, I don't use a funnel, so then I'm kind of still ticking away here. So <laughs> uh, it just depends on what you're guided to do. So then for online storage and sharing, especially if you're going to be creating things that people need to have access to, um, I use Dropbox and you can use Dropbox to store a lot of content, whether it's videos, whether it's documents, um, recordings, anything like that, you can store everything on a Dropbox. Um, it's just a, I think it's just a site in the cloud. Again, I'm not technologically advanced, which is why it's awesome to share this information without really knowing much about it, just knowing that it works. So um, I found it invaluable for sharing, sharing documents, sharing information, things like that. You can also use Google Docs as well, which we go through Google a little bit later. Um, but definitely Dropbox is a great way to, to store and to share content. Um, it's not, because it's all private, it's not, um, SEO doesn't get affected by search engine optimization. However, it's a, just a great option to have if you're wanting to share and to store information. Then to receive payments, um, you'll find whatever website you've set up or whatever launch or landing pages that you have set up. Um, usually they will have um, comparative um, and cooperative payment systems. Most of the ones use PayPal, which these are all free to set up. PayPal, Stripe or Square, which is all very free. They're all free to set up. Then once you earn money, um, they take a percentage, which is a very small amount um, for you to, to use their service. So I like that because if you've got no money to set up, at least you've got a payment system where you don't actually pay for their service until you actually receive money. So, and to be honest, I don't really notice the difference so much. Um, it's only a couple of dollars or hardly anything at all really once um, once you start receiving payments for you to use their service. So I think it's a great option to use um, to receive payments. They also receive credit card payments as well as PayPal or Stripe or Square payments. So um, again, play around with them if you aren't sure which one to use, but usually your websites or some of the other pages that you use will be um, giving you an idea as to which ones you can use as well. So also you're probably more familiar with one or the other. So go with, with whatever one you feel more comfortable with. Okay, so going down to merchandising. So merchandising is actually if you wanting to create products, um, products or services that you can sell online. I do find um, with merchandising, I'm talking about things like t-shirts or cups or anything. Now you'll be blown away when you go into the Redbubble website. <laughs> Redbubble is absolutely crazy good. Um, and the way Redbubble works is that if you've created a design or a quote or whatever, you can just download that into Redbubble and it creates 
literally a hundred or so products with that saying or that quote or your name or whatever on it. So um, Redbubble's amazing. If you, even if you want to just check it out, it's actually so cool how it works um, and how many different options. It can even create pants like leggings and hats and so many different things. It's actually really cool. I love it. And you just literally put in like the quote or the image or whatever, and it just goes across everything. It's just awesome. Um, and then there's Etsy as well. I don't know an incredible amount of, about that, but um, it's another option that you can um, sell more merchandising um, options on there as well and to create them as well. Uh, the next one is graphic design and images. So if you're actually wanting to create a design um, for your website or for your social media or whatever, um, I used to use PicMonkey a lot, which is, which was, is P I C M O N K E Y. Um, I used to use that a lot, and it's a free option as well as a paid option. And I used to use both before, but now I use Canva, which is C A N V A, and they give you a lot of options for free and paid design um, that you can help to create some graphic design images, um, quotes, anything like that. I mean, it's endless business cards, t-shirts, whatever you want to create, they actually help you to do that. So, so then if you're wanting to go down the pathway of courses, you can actually set up courses for free online. Um, these websites that I will be sharing with you will take a percentage of what you earn as a way of using their program um, for you to pay for it. So again, I like that. So um, you can still be selling something uh, and not actually have to pay for their product or service until you actually sell something. So Udemy is a really good one, which is U-D-E-M-Y. Um, and that's more of a, it's more of a, also a community platform where there's a lot of courses online. So uh, they tend to promote them as well. So Udemy will actually promote, can promote your course, especially if it's doing really well within their subscriber network. They actually have like a million or a couple of million, you know, course, course designers online there. So, so you've got access to that and your product is also being promoted in there. Um, and then there's Teachable, which is T-E-A-C-H-A-B-L-E. -E. Um, and Teachable is another great platform, but it's more of a private one. Um, and again, there is a free option where um, they charge you for when you sell something. Some of these also, also allow you to put free courses online. Um, so again, just have a look and do your research. But there's a lot of course platforms out there. So you just Google them, have a look. If anyone's not sure, you can message me. But these are ones that actually are offer you to do it for free. Um, then there's memberships. So wanting to set up a membership online, a lot of people just do it through sometimes Facebook, but it's actually illegal to set up a membership through Facebook. Um, so you do actually have to set up a, a system um, uh, a membership, a special membership system online, which will help you to hold the content that you're sharing within your membership. Um, so there's um, there's two of them that I recommend um, that actually take a take a percentage of again whenever you've got a membership. Um, memberships are usually either monthly subscription or yearly subscription, and these two website options will allow you to. Um, will allow you to actually start to promote your business and to have memberships, but they'll only take a percentage, which is um, group spaces and big tent. So those two will allow you to hold memberships. And then if you're wanting to create, create eBooks, there's designer with a double R at the end, um, or you can create them on PDFs and download them onto your website. But again, that's very hard if you're wanting to track and also make sure that people aren't sharing them. Um, but there's also Apple Pages and Sam Cart um, or Gumroad, which is another option to use. So um, again, if you've got content that you wanna share, you can use that. 
Um, video conferencing, you can use Zoom, Skype or FaceTime. Zoom, there is a, an, a free option, but I think after about 15 minutes, um, it cuts out. So as you can see, we've been going for longer than 50 minutes. So um, there is a paid option, which as you progress in your business, you can actually start to do paid options as well. Um, and then webinars, there's a lot of free webinars um, set, set up. There's um, Google Hangouts, there's, um, there's also on Zoom, um, but there's also a lot of really good paid options as well. So um, webinars are starting to be quite popular, but also this, you know, they, they're also starting to change their name as to what they're called and their facility and how they work. So um, again, whatever your business actually, uh, whatever helps your business actually works. Calendars, um, I do actually recommend um, Google Calendar because it actually links with a lot of different things. Um, when, when you're signing up for something or when someone's booking, especially like if people are booking sessions with you or anything like that, um, it sends through straight to your calendar. But also if you're wanting to set up a scheduler where people can book and it converts to the time that, um, that shows people the time in their city as well as in your own city. Um, I use sh schedules once, which is S-C-H-E-D-U-L-E once. Um, and then there's a pointy and there's Calendly as well. They all offer free options. Um, again, you can start off using those and then upgrade them when you start to create a bit of a business for yourself. Uh, and then with Google, if you go into Google, there's a lot of different options and you can have a really a good look through there. A lot of different options with um, that are option available for free. Um, with emails, you can set up a Gmail account, um, you can use Google Docs, you can use, you can use a survey process, um, the calendar, blogger, hangouts. I mean, that's just tip of the iceberg. Google's really good for free options, especially as you're starting to set up a business. Okay, well, that's all too much. Where do I start? <laughs> There's a lot of information there. So. Um, so the first thing you need to do is to focus on your purpose and your mission, not how am I going to make money out of this. So remember going back to that page that we talked about. Um, this one, your purpose, your mission. Go through the content that I've actually shared there and talked about there and focus on that. Uh, as I said, sometimes you'll receive information or it'll look like, you know, something, some people say, I don't know, how do I get paid to sing online? How do I get paid to um, help children online? Whatever. You just got to follow the system that I've shared with you up here. Um, not think about how you're going to make money out of it, but how can I help? And that's the way that you will start to convert things. Once you start acting on those things and you'll start to convert those things, um, which will start to help you to make money in your business. Um, then look into all the things that we've talked about today and go into your gut and tick off the things that feel exciting and easy to you and put a line through the things that don't feel good. So say, for example, I want you to go through this list. So I want you to go through this list and then say, what, do, what feels good to me? Like maybe going to, oh, eBooks feel exciting. Courses feel exciting. Um, memberships don't feel exciting. Merchandising feels exciting, whatever. Video conferencing, that feels exciting. Webinars don't feel exciting. So again, go into your gut and tick off the things that feel easy and exciting to you. And then just cross out the things that don't. Even in this you know, section here, you don't actually have to have a website. You don't have to do all these listings, but you might just like talking on videos. So you'll tick YouTube, but then put a cross through some of the others. Content you create for YouTube can also be used in a podcast. So just tune into you. As I said, always go into yourself. Don't look at anyone else and see what speaks to you, which one actually helps or you feel like could um, help you to move forward doing a thing that you really love. <clears throat> and then um, write a business blueprint with three elements from what I've just learned above. So this is my mission. This is how I'm delivering my mission. And this is how I'm going to do it using the things that you've ticked. Um, I'd love to hear how you guys go with that. Um, because it's, it actually is really easy once you use those three questions. So you write down, this is my mission from what you've talked about earlier. This is how I'm delivering my mission, which is what we talked about earlier. And this is how I'm going to do it. So 
how are you going to do it is the online presence and the operational software. You know, whatever you've ticked there is actually how you're meant to do it. Surround yourself with like-minded people in your industry so it's not what you know, it's who. It's really important to start to connect to people. Um, once you've worked out all these other things, start to connect to people online who are already doing what you want to do um, or people who are learning. Um, and you can again find that through groups or people who have websites or whatever that are doing that. And then the last thing that I'm going to recommend is continue to do your own growth and personal development through the process of running an online business. Um, running a business will be the most rewarding and greatest and hardest thing that you've ever had to do. <laughs> always have an always learning mindset to do this journey and you'll do really well. So it's really important to include all of these things when you're trying to work out what you're meant to do, how you're going to do it and use the content that we used above to be able to work that out. So I'm just going to shop just to um, stop share this now. And um, we got any questions here? Damn, I didn't see these. <laughs> okay, so um, Viv says, yes, I do that and only focus on the very next step and then the next perfect instead of thinking of the whole as that gets overwhelming and I just want to not do anything. Okay, I cringe when people post about transcending 3D. I'm <laughs> thinking why. It's always got something to you've got to go within. Um, why are we wanting to transcend? Isn't this why we're here to experience humanity? Well, again, that's helping you to know what is part of your passion and your purpose. Um, drag and drop editing. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Peggy's there. Hi. Um, and yeah, Viv said, free, free Zoom lets you do one-on-one -on -one with unlimited time for a group call. You get 40 minutes before it cuts off. So, um, so yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope this has actually helped you. Um, go back into the um, Facebook page if you want to make any comments um, or the event section. I will share with you um, that Love for Humanity will be running um, these calls once a week with different topics. And it'll also be available on YouTube afterwards if you want to have a listen to the recording. Um, but there's also opportunities down the track to join the Love for Humanity team. Um, which is all part of the continuing your personal development work, um, but also surrounding yourself with like-minded people, which is exactly what is required for... Um, Kristen's there. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely start to look at ways that you can continue your growth, which is what we're going to be offering through that process and also um, how you can surround yourself with like-minded people and continue to grow. Um, I have been shown that through those two avenues, which is continuing self-development and growth, as well as um, working together, that and that's our next steps for humanity. And this is why it's called Love for Humanity, is actually personal growth and self-development, as well as uh, working together to, to help humanity. Everyone has their own gifts and their own talents and we want to use these to help the world and that's why why we're all here together so um use the information i've given you today share with me how you went with that um, and over the next few weeks i'll be sharing you more about love for humanity and its mission and purpose um, it's actually not about me it's about the collective and all of us working together so i'm very excited as that progresses because it's a new concept that is not developed or anyone has ever done out there before but you know that's how we roll here so have a great rest of the day great great week and i'll see you guys next week and thanks for joining me <laughs> see ya